Hey, it's Harcourt from Play. Today I'll show you how to create a custom prefab in Play. A prefab is a prefabricated interaction that you can just drag and drop onto your design and it works like magic. So for example, if I look at my iOS simulator right now, you can see I can't drag and drop any of these list items. But if I go into interaction mode and grab the parent of those list items and add a drag and drop list prefab, now all of a sudden I can rearrange any of these objects just by adding that one interaction node. I can also customize this interaction by adjusting these prefab controls here. So you'd see it scales up a little bit when I start dragging. I could change that to be scaling down a little bit. Now, when I do that same interaction, you can see the button I have, or the stack I have selected has scaled down. So prefabs allow you to create consistent interactions that are still slightly customizable. And we'll show you how to do this in this video. Custom prefabs are really helpful for creating a motion design system to keep your project consistent. It's also helpful to allow designers who maybe don't have experience making complex prototypes to use really powerful examples and make high quality prototypes quickly. So now let's go into this custom prefab page and let's set this up. So I have this button I've already added with these three interactions. Basically, it's going to scale the button down when I press down and scale it back up when I remove my touch. It's also gonna play a haptic here. Now, if I wanted to make this replicable, I could turn it into a prefab. I'll select all of the triggers here and right click and wrap them in a prefab. Now they're all in this empty prefab. Now I could also start from scratch with a prefab just by adding it from the quick add menu, searching prefab, and you'll see this new add prefab option. I can unlock it so it's in the same state as this one and I can edit it and then I can relock it and everything will be hidden. Again, I'll show you that on this prefab. When I lock it, all of those nodes are hidden inside this one prefab node, and then I can unlock it. They all show again, and I can edit the prefab. So let's say I wanted to also adjust the opacity here. I can take the set property action, duplicate it, change the property to be opacity. So now we've added all of our interactions to the prefab. Now we need to add prefab controls so we can adjust some of the properties inside our prefab. So, First, let's try adding a scale prefab control that's going to adjust the scale of this set property action. So we're going to add one using this plus button here. You can see there's different control types. We're going to use a number control, and this allows the user to choose a number. So I'm going to add that here. And now I can right click or just click on this little uh, gear icon. And now there's a ton of different properties. First, I want to rename this to be scale so the user knows what they're going to be inputting here. Then I can adjust the range here. So if I wanted the maximum to be say 100, maybe I wanted the minimum to be zero and I want this to be a percent. Great, so now I can go from 0% to 100%, which is correct, that's what we want the scale options to be. And now we can do the same thing for opacity. So we'll add it, add a num another number prefab control I'll double click this time to rename it as opacity. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll change the max here to be 100. We'll change the min here. This is the min value to be zero. And then we will make this also into a percent value. So now we have those two number prefab controls. Now we need to connect them. And you're gonna do this by just dragging from the right side onto the property one. And I want this to be the value of our set scale or set property scale action. So now those are connected and you can see in this value property, it says scale and it's connected to this prefab control. And we'll do the same thing for opacity. We'll just drag this onto the value there. So now whatever the user sets in the scalar opacity is going to be used in the set property actions here. Now I wanna show you one more. This is gonna be a Boolean type prefab control. That means the user can select true or false. If the switch is turned off, it's false. If it's turned on, then it's true. And we're gonna use this to control whether the haptic should play or not. So we'll rename this haptic. Now, as I said, I want that value to control whether this haptic plays. So we're gonna add a condition in here. On this condition, we're gonna check if that haptic control, so haptic right there, you can see it's from the prefab, equals true. If it does equal true, so the users flip the switch on, indicating they do want a haptic to play, then we're gonna add the set haptic action to the if section here. But if haptic is false, so the users flip the switch off, then nothing will play, no haptics at all. 
So now we have all of our interactions set up and we have all of our prefab controls connected inside our prefab. So now we can just rename our prefab. I'll right click on it, rename it. Maybe we'll call this button reaction. And then I can save this as a prefab if I want to reuse it, which I do, of course, it's a prefab. So I'm going to right click and choose to save the prefab. When I did that, you'll see in my interactions panel up here under my prefabs, we now have that prefab we just added. So now I can lock this prefab and I can adjust these values and test it on my iOS device. So let's set the scale to be 23 and the opacity 72 and let's turn on the haptic. Now, see, scales down, looking good. We can also change this, maybe to be something that's not so ridiculously small. And it's all customizable based on these controls that we allow the user to change. They can't change the animation. They can't change the type of haptic because all of that is baked into the prefab. You are only allowed to change the things that whoever designed the prefab allows you to change here. So it allows for some level of customization while also making sure things are kept uniform. Now, the real test of this is whether you can use this on a different object. So I'm going to go back into design mode on my page. I'm going to add another button. Let's do an icon this time, and then we can align everything. We've got a little gap in here, and hmm, let's make this size large. Okay, so now back in interaction mode, we can go ahead and add this button reaction prefab we just created onto this button. And now we can change some of the settings. Hmm, no haptic. And it works here as well, works on both of these. Now, the only other thing I will note here is that if I unlocked this prefab and edited it, either on the original instance of it or any other times I'm using it, and let's say I change something, so maybe I'll change my haptic to be a notification success haptic. This is going to affect this prefab here. So if I were to do this, it would be using a success haptic but it's not going to affect the prefab that's saved here. So if I wanted this to be my new prefab, I'd need to resave this. So again, right click and save it and it'll be added as another prefab here. So to summarize that, basically you can't edit prefabs once they've been saved. You just have to create new prefabs. So this was just a super simple example. As we showed you before, there are much more complex examples. So if we go back to that page and unlock this drag and drop prefab, you'll see that there are a ton of different interaction nodes in here, again, all baked in, you don't have to set any of this stuff up. You just have to drag and drop it and it automatically works. The same is true for some of our other prefabs as well. So if I go over to my interactions panel here, you can see a list of all of these prefabs and I can add any of them. So maybe I change that and instead add a drag and drop grid. Now this is gonna look different and I can drag and drop everything as a grid instead. If I unlock this, you'll see there are just as many things inside here as there were in the other one. And so we have these for tap, for touch, for scrolling, pan, animate, timer, map, and also API. We make it really easy for you to connect to OpenAI, but let's say you have a API that you're using, you can create a prefab using your specific API for your team to use. So they don't have to go about setting all of this up every single time. The last thing I'll mention about prefabs is they can actually be imported project to project. So if you create it in one master design system project file, you can then import that into every other project you work on so you can continue to use that same prefab. And that is how you use custom prefabs in play. Thanks so much for watching this video. We're excited to see how you build out your motion design system with custom prefabs in play.